I just like to say good evening, creatives, and um, I want to wish everyone a very happy, healthy, and creative new year. The Wellington Art Society is in its 41st year of creativity and community outreach. And uh, anybody that's not familiar with us, please check out our website, wellingtonartsociety.org. I'd like to also invite you to our monthly meetings. That's the second Wednesday of every month, 5.30 at the Wellington Community Center. Each meeting, we have a meet and greet, networking time, uh, member spotlight, presentations, demos by professional artists and marketing and resource information, as well as exhibition and sales opportunities. The next meeting is January 11th, so please come out, connect, engage, be inspired, and, and just uh, come. We're a wonderful group. Tonight, we are delighted to have the brilliant professional fine artist, portraitist, uh, illustrator, Dorian Vallejo, here to teach and inspire us. He will be presenting a four-day workshop at the Armory, January 24th and 27th. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, Dorian. Well, thank you. I think that's probably a better way of introducing me than I was going to do, and I was just going to jump right into it. Uh, and I want to thank you, Leslie, because of the many people and different arts organizations that I reached out to. Leslie was really one of the only ones to respond and then follow up in such a pleasant manner. And so I'm thankful to all of you to be here tonight so that I can share this with you. And as Leslie said that uh, I am going to be there in Florida uh, at the Armory Art Center in Palm Beach teaching a workshop and my little <coughs> demos tonight will be a preview of what I'm going to share. Um, and I think maybe a note uh, about that is is maybe in order. And what I'm going to share tonight uh, is is technical. It's technique. It's how I do something. Uh, but really, what's behind that is a lot of um, ideas and beliefs about being and philosophy. That is the reason why I paint the way I paint. Uh, and that can get really rather expansive and I could probably use up all the time talking about that. So if you have questions about anything like that, I'm happy to answer. If you have any questions while I'm going along, um, I, I think that it's set up that you can ask questions and I can stop and that's fine with me if, if you want to, if something presents itself to you immediately and you want to ask. Otherwise, I'm also fine if you want to wait until the end and just make a note of it and then um, ask at the end. So, um, okay, I guess without any further ado, uh, maybe I will get started. It occurs to me that uh, I'm going to show you a video to start with, but um, at the beginning of the video, it won't be exactly clear what I'm doing. And so, uh, so I thought that what I would do is show you uh, kind of where I'm going. This is a pencil drawing that that I'll be working on, and it's the same model. Um, this is a painting of the same model, and this is uh, the setup here. So uh, I do a lot of work from life. It's very important to me that I work like that in, in and I also work from photographs. Sometimes I combine the two of them together, but the practice of working from life is very, very important. Um, so um, this drawing here was probably done in about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, and the the workshop that I'm going to be teaching is, is um, the idea is basically from drawing to painting because many people have uh, a certain comfort level with using a pencil or even uh, charcoal or some kind of drawing instrument but then when they get to color when they get to painting somehow the move from this to this just seems so intimidating and i would like in the workshop to sort of bridge that gap and i will 
show you tonight uh, how I actually think about drawing and painting in uh, using the same sort of approach so that it's really not as intimidating as one would think. It's really just using a little bit of color, but the approach is basically the same um, for, for both. So with that said, I have uh, prepared a video here and um, I will start by saying that the first thing that I'm going to do is show you how I block it out very, very quickly um, with what is called a gesture and setting up the basic composition. So I'll move back and forth between the pencil drawing and, and, um, and the painting. But right here, within, a first, within the first couple of seconds, uh, what I want to show is that I've moved from the bottom here to the top of the page to almost every point in the page where the extremities uh, would of the composition, how I want it to appear within the first couple of seconds. Um, gosh, this, you know, really within a couple of seconds, uh, this is, is already laid out. And from here almost, like the, the rest is, is going to go quickly. Um, so I'll, you know, I'm now measuring in the head. It's important to me that the head is somewhat, it's maybe on the third, and maybe that's a, maybe a little half, a little more than half the page. So I'm doing the same thing with with the head that I do with with um, with the actual page. So I'm going to stop here just for a moment. And uh, so as I showed you, as I said earlier, the way I break down the page here um, by marking like the top and, and the sides and maybe the bottom, the shape, the basic shape, this will become her hair um, and this. This is the middle of the page, obviously, right here. So I'm playing off that. Here's the middle of the page, roughly here. So this indicates roughly close to the middle, you know, where the hair is going to land up, roughly close to that middle. These, these things are um, very, very basic, but they're very nice ways of dividing up the rectangle and keeping the proportions in line. So I'm doing the same thing with the head where I'm finding now now that I got that bigger shape, I, I found the smaller shape of the head and then I'm dividing the head again and then I'm starting to divide the face here. So let's go ahead and, and continue forth a little bit. Uh, once I have those proportions in and I feel roughly comfortable about it, then I'll probably actually start um, drawing a little more. That indicates where I'm going to go, that first drawing that I showed you. Um, that's actually what I kind of have in mind. So now I'm going to do the same thing with, with paint. And as you can see, I'm sort of, again, just marking the extremities. And even that paintbrush is, is somewhat like it could, you could easily say it's like a pencil. It just happens to have paint on there. Um, I have watered down this paint or thinned it out. It's probably a better way to say because it it's not water. I'm using oil paint and, uh, and right now just mineral spirits. So you can see that almost the same exact approach, the same kind of thinking. Um, I don't know. Do you have any questions at this point or should I continue forth? So, okay. Um, I'll, I'll just continue forth. So from here, I've sped up the video. Um, and, and you'll see, you know, like I'll make another pass at this. Again, not entirely specific, but that that's... Uh, that little bit was like my second pass. Now I'll make the second pass and paint kind of 
uh, dividing it up in a similar kind of way. The basic idea that I'm really trying to get across uh, with with these demos and and when I have my workshop is how similar the the two approaches can be, so they they actually don't have to be. You just don't have to be intimidated. And when you're drawing, you could feel like you're painting, and then when you're painting, you could you know seamlessly feel like you're drawing, uh, and and just go back and forth in, in that kind of way. So now that I have things mapped out a little better or blocked in, now I'll I'll give it a third pass, still not being perfectly, perfectly detailed. Uh, still, you know, but it's the third pass. I, I know where the eyes, nose, and mouth are, and, and I can spend a little bit more time if the model moves or if she gets tired or something happens with her expression. Um, or even if the lighting changes, I haven't committed too much to, to it. We're probably maybe, I don't know what, five minutes into the drawing at this point, six, you know, and, and I'm really starting to do the best that I can to kind of work around the entire drawing without being like too careful about the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ear, like what exactly the hair is doing. Really trying to get that structure of the head as, as an oval to sit on top of of the neck and and then the darks of the hair um to to act as a as a frame uh for the face in the way i actually see it like i'm not arbitrarily like putting it there i'm looking up at the model as she's posing and you know one interesting note it occurs to me that like the drawing is is somewhat different than the painting and um now like when when the model first sits there first of all i'm not a camera so uh and i'm not trying to be a hundred percent accurate like one of the things that i'm trying to do is is um have a response to what i'm seeing in front of me um Maybe I'll just put that on pause and, and talk about this. This is very much the same thing that I was doing with with uh, with the pencil. You know, I'm framing it again with with the darks, the basic uh, skin tone. Uh, there's it's a little lighter up here than it is on this side. It's a little darker down here. Uh, you know, these like chunks of light I'm putting down and then you know, lighter here, a little, little darker here. I'll probably get rid of this in a minute. Um, so there it is. You know, basic, basic light, uh, light setup. As the lights, if this were an egg, the the light would be lightest here and then sort of cascading down. Um, and then I'm starting. You know, or if if it were an apple. I, I would create the basic shape and then put the dots on the apple. So, uh, yeah, like what I was saying before, um, slightly different, um, or maybe maybe more than slightly different appearance to to the drawings. Um, I'm responding. Probably, I'm also warming up uh, to to the model like as she's posing as i'm posing and um maybe we're both a little bit more alert and lively and optimistic uh about everything and and that drawing probably that probably presents itself um inside the first like 10 minutes and then there's a different quality of of um poetry that starts to express itself uh in the painting um the painting is is many more moments over over time uh, same 20 minutes but then a break and then another 20 minutes then a break and then another 20 minutes this basically is really um just developing it further it's, it's not really any more complicated than that so different brushes you know the the tone of the background 
uh, and that tone is the every all the tones, the colors, they they are uh, a response to what I'm seeing right in front of me. So um, that's the that's the end of of. Oh, look at this. Okay, great, how nice. Here I have uh, an alternative approach. So the first one, what I showed you is is uh, painting on on a white um, on a white piece of canvas. This is also a piece of canvas. I've I've taped it down to a board or to the pad, and now I'm toning the paper. And it's, I'm marking the extremities in the same way, except I'm sort of doing it with the paint and I'm wiping out um, the lights as I go along. So uh, that will become, you can almost see what will be her shoulder here. This will probably be her head, um, but let's move along and, and then I'll, I'll stop and go. So that was a paper, um, I don't know, paper towel that I was wiping out with. And there's the, the marking of the extremities right there. Again, all of that happens within the first couple of minutes. So uh, first couple of seconds. I mean, we're probably about a minute into the pose at the moment. So I'm establishing the lights and darks, and then very quickly uh, moving towards the, the basic uh, breakup of light and shade over the face. One interesting note about this as well is uh, I'm painting on location, so you'll see the the light flicker back and forth, and that's because there's a, a sun, and uh, and it's coming in. So at this point, I've sort of figured out how to control that window. It was really flickering like mad, and now I was able to block it, and and you can see the what's going on a little bit better. But um, this is basically like, it's another painting, um, but it's also like the type of thing that I finish within uh, a couple of hours. So the next thing I'm gonna show you, uh, cause that's a portrait, is uh, like what I would do if it were a drawing. Um, because really what I wanna share is is from you know how I move from from drawing to painting and from painting to drawing. So um, again, this is this horizontal right here is almost halfway through the page. This is almost the middle of the page right here. This is if if uh, if I were to divide it in thirds. So uh, and then her head. If I were to divide this in thirds again, uh, then it would be half and then this would be the third of the page and that's where her head is landing up. So the most activity is happening on this side uh, and then it's a lot more calm on this side. So um, I will show you basically how I block it in very lightly. Um, and you know, again, it's within a couple of seconds, this is, is mapped out. Uh, and once I have it mapped out, then I'll just, you know, start and work my way down. Uh, I like to give it a couple of passes uh, just in case I'm not pleased with something. So that might be my linear pass, you know, with line. And now I'm putting in a little bit of tone. That whole drawing was probably done in about 10, again, maybe 10 minutes. Um, five or 10 minutes and it's a very, very quick drawing. Um, but it gives me an indication uh, of what can be done in that time period. And if I wanted to develop it further with paint, uh, everything is there. If that pose, you know, if I was gonna take it further for hours, I, I would know within the first five or 10 minutes, like that I'm comfortable with the basic proportion, the basic shapes, the basic composition. Um, and then, you know, I could sit there and and uh, tweak it and render and noodle it, uh, and you know, until I felt comfortable. So that's 
uh, the next drawing that I'm going to lay out. And this is pretty light what I'm going to do here. So I'm showing you where I'm going with it. Um, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and give you a little image of actually what it looked like. Uh, I had to really bump up the contrast here so you could see uh, what I was doing. And so I've talked about the, the basic breakup of like half the page and, and dividing it into thirds. The other thing that unifies a composition technically is arabesques. So those are the, the curves and, and um, the circles that unify and flow throughout the whole thing. And, and so you have these straight lines that end up working through the composition to kind of unify it. But then you also have curves. And so that uh, being conscious of those curves and how you want them to, to uh, be imposed in your picture that you see something lyrical is part of the poetry that that you're trying to express uh, and and change about like what's up there. You're inspired by what's up there, but not copying it exactly. Um, and that's really what the difference is in a sense between taking a photograph and just copying it exactly and um, having an artistic response to what's up there. So this is a color pencil and um, either watercolor ink or acrylic. Uh, but again, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, it could be paint, it could be oil paint, it could be acrylic. I think it's actually maybe a combination of both. Um, and, and you know, the, the basic idea then is, is the approach. It's really uh, the approach. And with that in mind, now I'm gonna show you a charcoal drawing to show you how really the the whole thing whether it's an oil painting or pencil drawing or um, in this case it's charcoal uh, and i'll begin with charcoal uh, using this vine charcoal and it's a, a a soft bit of vine which will allow me to kind of smudge it around so i think you know by now maybe you're, you're seeing that it I have my first pass, or this might even be my second or third pass already, um, where it's light and then I kind of smudge it out. And that was pretty much like the the difference between, uh, not the difference, but the in-between spot between uh, painting and drawing. So um, a couple of different techniques there, some rags, some brushes, um, some erasing. Um, I'm moving like quickly in this demo because, you know, I don't think it's as important to see every little stroke as to understand really uh, the overall. And, you know, the overall here again, like, is that I'm trying to find the middle and her chin pretty much falls on the middle. Her, the corner of her eye is pretty much, you know, like lining up in that way. And that's how I'm balancing this whole the triangle of her inside the composition. So um, then let's see if I decided, I did. Um, I thought I'd pick up here with, with uh, in the same place that we started before with a charcoal drawing, but then if I wanted to like tone it, I would just, take some, in this case, it's a kind of uh, gouache watercolory um, type of material and, and just put it right over the drawing. In this case, I'll probably lose a good part of the hair that I drew, but the whole process is not meant to be delicate. It's meant to have this, this freedom so that you can move back and forth. So, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm adding a little bit of acrylic paint to this uh, some white here and some black there. Um, you know, just then I'll work back into the drawing to sort of uh, fix up some of those things, develop it a little bit further. Uh, 
I actually added a little bit too much paint, and so now I'm scraping out with a razor blade. So, uh, that seemed to add the texture to the hair that I wanted. Uh, whereas that the white on the underneath was was better suited for like the kind of acrylic paint that I was using. So, um, okay. So that is, uh, that's that one. Then I also have, um, I have two more videos for you. So I'm going to show you these two videos here. And then I will, um, then I'll take a break and, and ask some questions, um, or you can ask me questions. So here's that approach where I'm, I'm sort of toning in the whole board. And what'll be interesting is while I'm toning it in, I'm going to try and find the basic shape of what's going on. So you'll see that first thing right there that I did was, let me see if I can back this up slightly. Whoa, let's see, right about there. I'm trying to figure out where the head, hands, the basic shape of it might go. Um, right there, that, that's, that would be the triangular shape. Um, I'm not entirely pleased with that, so I'll wipe it out again. Now, but since I've warmed up that way, I kind of know what I'm doing and I understand the triangle as I'd like it to be. So I have the straight, uh, those straight lines of the triangle, the head, this will be her arm. And then I'm also trying to find like that arabesque, that sweeping arabesque that will unify the whole thing. There'll be another arm that comes through here. So, um, Once I, like I say, once I have that initial composition down, then from there, it's really just a matter of mixing colors and lights and darks and um, working out the, working out the drawing. So uh, this is actually somebody else's painting uh, and it's sideways because I'm going to paint over it. They didn't like it anymore. And uh, I decided, well, um, it's an extra panel. Why not paint over it? This little highlight right here, which is a little bit of raised paint, will vex me at some point. So I'll scrape it down. Um, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, I just toned that piece of, uh, toned the board to knock down that drawing. And now I'm basically doing the same thing. Finding the basic oval of the head, if that was an egg, the lightest light here, and then how it kind of works its way down, and then putting in the spots. Um, I got rid of that that little that little uh, mark that was there, uh, and that sort of completes my my demos for tonight. Um, so I think I will uh, stop my screen share at this point. And um, perhaps uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah, I was telling uh, Dorian before that uh, I was happy that he showed how he was painting over another painting because I was recently gifted a whole bunch of half used um, canvases and I think I have reason to believe they might be oil paint. Oh, sorry, I'll turn my video back on. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I think this artist used oil paint. And um, so I was happy to see that you were covering over with, um, but how did you actually get the high spots off of that? <laughs> oh, so, okay. So um, here's a, those are good questions. So the, the first thing is, uh, you do want to figure out if it's oil or if it's acrylic underneath. I guess the easiest way would be to ask the, the person if they know. Um, you know, but short of that, if if you put, uh, you can put oil on top of acrylic, um, like acrylic gesso. Gesso is basically acrylic. Um, um, but 
if you uh, try to put water on, on, if you try and put gesso over it and, uh, and it was an oil painting, then it will crack. Like you can't put the acrylic gesso on top of an oil painting that will be problematic um so 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 that's first thing and like usually when i'm painting over paintings um i mean i i've painted over acrylic paintings too but uh in this case i was at i was at a studio and the person had this painting that they had discarded and so i knew it was oil and i just just use it in, in the way that you would like an oil primed canvas um so okay. that yeah i mean that will totally work fine if you're a little worried about it you could um like if you don't know if it's oil or acrylic like one way is to put water on top of it and see how that reacts or put some oil on top of it and you know the one will okay. one will work well and one will beat up crazily and not work well um so um you know, you, you just can test and see see what that's like. Uh, you can also sand it down a little bit. In general, I don't sand things down. A lot of my friends do, but I'm kind of anxious because worry about cadmium and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. we're worried about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're worried. You know, <laughs> trying to like longevity is is maybe on all of our minds. So um, there's no need to yeah, fool around with stuff. <laughs> okay, right. awesome. Um, and so, I oh, yeah. in chat. oh, so go ahead. Then the other question you had was like how I scraped off that, that little raised bit. Of, um, so while I'm actually painting uh, and there's paint on there, then I can use sandpaper and just sort of like dig into it. Uh, not really, you know, like that, but, you know, I can sand it down a little bit or I can take a razor blade and just like sneak a little bit of it off. Or a palette knife that um, you know I, that I can move a little bit to the side and sort of you know just knock it down until I feel comfortable. In this case, I think what I did is I probably used a razor blade, I, if I remember correctly. Um, it was either a razor blade or or a palette knife, and it messed up the painting a little bit, but you know that was okay. It's just paint. I mean. The drawings all there everything's there so then i just put some paint back on top of it and that, i didn't know that that little piece of you know painting underneath was going to rise up and bother me in the way that it did but there it is so Very good so i don't know if you're able to see chat but i can kind of help you with the chat um janine yeah, is asking <laughs> uh, she says, please give details in placing the dots of lighter paint in spots. And Janine, if you want to unmute and, and if you, you know, want to explain that question, I don't know. Does, does that make sense? Just like about placing, you placed white paint, several areas on the face, I assume it's just for lighting. Oh, interesting. See, I'm glad that I, I'm glad that you said that. Um, so it was the the light that I put on the face. I thought you were talking about initially when I I put down those dots around you know the 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 page at the beginning of of the demo. Um, so what I do like as I'm sort of smearing down that paint, it can get a little bit. Um, uh, muddy maybe it's it doesn't really get too muddy but the clarity of what's the lightest light and what's the darkest dark um, can get lost so often what I'll do is I'll take the almost pure white if not just pure white um, and look for the lightest light on the painting if it's close to white and just plop put it right on there and if it comes close to the cheek then you know, I'll put it there too, or the nose, put it there. Um, and then like you would, if you are working with your palette, like sometimes I've actually looked at the palette and thought that painting on the palette looks more interesting than the overworked surface of what's going on in my painting. Like a, the painting itself, the quality of the paint on the painting itself looks so 
timid and shy and and fearful. And I look down at the palette and I think, oh, look at that. That looks so much more exciting. So I've decided that I can do that right there on the painting because why not? It's just paint. So I'll take some paint and uh, put it the lightest light where it could be. And then maybe mix in a little bit of pink, maybe mix in a little bit of yellow uh, in the same way that I would do on my palette, searching for the color like, oh, that's not quite right, but that's not, well, that's kind of close. Well, I can just do that right on the painting in that general area where I think it's it's light-ish or the lightest light. Like, again, like I'm saying, I might work that sort of value structure and hierarchy on my palette, a kind of mixing out a string, like maybe the lightest light and then something a little bit darker and then something a little bit darker and then something a little bit darker and then the shades on the other side. Well. Why don't I just do that right on my painting? I'm like, it's there and I'm looking in front of it. I could just scoop it right off the palette, put it on the painting and kind of maneuver it around and get that general idea. So um, I don't have to fuss around on the palette as much. And then when I put it on the painting, it looked good on the palette, but it's not right on the painting. Um, so, um, gosh. Does that answer the question, sort of? Well, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, a lot of painters like to paint dark to light, but it sounds like you kind of bounce around a lot between the values. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm trying to work um, at the same time the lights and the darks. So. If I, when I was, uh, when I was a lot younger, like I was working uh, dark to light, but sort of the trouble with that is um, in some way, like, especially when I was younger and maybe even now too, there's sort of an inhibition that like, you're worried that you're gonna mess up. You're spending time, you're investing time. And, and so like, I'm unsure of, of how, how light something could be and so if i'm just starting with the darks or i just sort of map out like here and then map out there and then map out the eyes and then just kind of spread out or just uh work just the darks and then work up to the lights um i might get it off how do i know that the halftone is right the basic the way we're seeing with our eyes is we're seeing the total all at once so um that's how I'm trying to paint is trying to say like, okay, that's the darkest dark. And in relationship to that, um, the skin tone is, is looking like, like this value and maybe this tint and maybe this color. Um, and then the lighter lights are like, that's how they look in relationship to the midtone and in relationship to the darkest dark. And as I'm moving, Initially, it's very, very abrupt. Um, but as I'm moving along very quickly, I can kind of um, get those relationships into a place that I feel comfortable. At. And instead of waiting for the painting to be done when I put on the final highlight at the very end, um, this way I could work a painting and have something in 20 minutes. You know, it's uh, and and it's, you know, it's, I can really work it or leave it at any point uh, because I'm working the total all at once from the total rectangle. I'm not just working from one spot down. I'm working, you know, the, the whole composition um, in its linear aspect, but then in its volumetric and value aspect at the same time. So, um, yeah. I can really relate to what you're saying about being timid. I totally do that. Um, Janine is asking a follow-up question about the dots at the beginning of the painting. She's saying, how, how are the dots at the beginning of the painting different from this, um, maybe different from the lighter paint in the spots, uh, in the highlights? Is that what you're asking, Janine? You can go ahead and unmute if you want to clarify. Okay. Sorry, it takes a little bit of time. 
Um, okay. I was wanting to know, yes, he mentioned um, that there's a different way that he puts the dots on at the beginning of the painting versus the way that he does it for uh, the lighting in the painting. Okay, so um, I'm gonna uh, assume that you were here for the beginning of, of the demo. Um, and basically it was, uh, I could have done the same thing with a pencil, sort of mark out, you know, like um, here, here, you know, like there. And, um, but I, and instead I drew a couple of lines indicating it, but, um, you know, in, instead of lines, I did it um, uh, in that second video um, where I was showing, like it was the portrait and I was showing first the pencil drawing and then the portrait. Um, the dots were almost, they, they could have been lines, but they were really just indicators to where, um, where the extremities of the pose were. It, it, it could have been lines, it could have been like, like later I, I had smudges across, uh, like as if I was, if it were clay, I would just be molding the clay into, into a particular shape. Um, it just happens that when we're making um, images, pictures in the way we make them, we're making them inside a rectangle and that rectangle like acts as, as limits to our composition. So um, without getting too worried about a likeness, I use like either lines or dots or a scribble or something to, to figure out how I'm going to fit my shape inside the, the overall shape of the rectangle. And so, you know, those dots will, they could be, you might think of them as once the, once I put them down or once you put them down, um, that it's like, oh, this could be like connect the dots, like the the type of drawing we did when we were younger. It's like, okay, great. Like I've made a dot there, 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 roughly indicating where I want the overall shape to be. And and now I can start, you know, uh, doing my next pass and seeing if I feel like those dots have uh, an accurate relative relationship to to the composition that I want to make, you know, related to what I'm actually seeing. Great. Any, um, any other questions? I have a question. Hey, Dorian. Hey, is this Ron? Think, no, Carlos. Sorry. Oh, wait, this is, uh, uh, let me see who, Carlos, there you are. Hey, how you doing? Good, good um, to see Carlos. Thanks. So I had a, a question. Um, so I've been studying more on on perspective. So my question for you is, how do you establish the relationship between the sitter and yourself with the surroundings? Because I noticed in the, um, your, your your drawing of the female on the on the sofa how um do you do you just go at it or are you thinking in the back of your head where are the vanishing points where is the eye level and basically putting this female on the on the sofa and then looking at hey like is is the hand where it's supposed to be or are you just intuitive intuitively just going at it Okay, that's a re Carlos, you asked such good questions. I'm, I'm glad you signed on. <laughs> um, so I am, a, I'm, okay. The first thing I'm doing when I look at, at any, let me, uh, let me see how I can break this down. Okay, so the, the urge to create is like the artistic response to experience. So that's that. Um, when I'm working with a model or if I'm, you know, at any point, I am like, this happens for all of us. You, you see something and you think, oh my God, that's beautiful. Um, and it happens immediately. It's so quick when that happens um, that 
that's what I'm looking at immediately. Um, secondarily, uh, if I'm working with a model, I ask myself, uh, is this the best pose? I love this pose. Would this be better uh, if I were on the left side or the right side or higher up, standing on a chair or sitting down on the floor? Like, uh, and actually I'll get up and I'll walk around the, the model. If I'm on location, I'll do the same thing. Like I've been in a cafe standing on a chair or standing up like right next to the model or you know, like I'll go to somebody's house or in my house and, and I'll do the same thing. If it's if I'm on the train or, you know, or if I'm if I'm not able to do that, then then I'm actually just stuck with what I have. And I think, OK, that's the perspective. So um, if the perspective often like if the perspective uh, my first response is is like I said in the in the demos, it's the overall shapes. But right after that, I start looking. Well, okay, let's take a second look at those shapes. How do if somebody's sitting down, and I'm going to do a three quarter. Uh, if I'm sitting at eye level with them, then often the the knees if if they don't have them stretched out if they're just sitting there they they look like um just short-legged people you know because you're you're just looking straight at the knees so i found that it looks a little better if i'm standing up um but that also that will give a different sort of impression uh uh to to the model uh depends what they're wearing you know, it depends on the surroundings. Like, say, behind me, there's there's a whole bunch of, of books. Um, and it acts as a flat kind of wall with all of these these things. But if I start, now I can't see myself, but if I start doing that, you know, that's a totally different set of, like, um, uh, design and angles and lines that are happening with that. And if I sat on the floor looking at me uh, and and I was a subject and I was sitting there, then that would make a very different image. So I look at the image and I say to myself, um, what is it that I'm trying to get across with this image? So this starts to get into the philosophy that I was talking about earlier, right? When I first opened up like our talk. Um, do I, if it was like underneath like that, right? that could be uh more heroic it might make the the, the subject look like um you know uh imposing or it would like i would sit on the floor and i would ask myself is 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 that what i want to do then i might stand up or stand on a table or something and say like okay how does that change it how am i responding what is that overall you know, and I look around and I do these things and um, for years I would ask these questions and I, I wasn't quite clear what the answer would be and so I would just have to draw it. And as I was drawing it, I, I would say to myself, well, I, 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 think, I think this looks better than that. Like, I don't really know. I think it does. Um, or you know, uh, sometimes I would take a picture with my phone because I, I just couldn't even see it, you know, but not with my phone when before phones were even around with a camera. And then, it, you know, and then you couldn't even look at the camera. So uh, or I would do a gesture. Right. So I would do a gesture standing up, sitting down from one side, from the other side. Um, and, and I couldn't. So a little thumbnail and I'd say, well, I don't know, like um is one what makes something better than the other and over time i came we've spoken about this in in you know in in a previous call but over time i came to uh feel that i understood what i wanted to do with my art how i wanted to to align with my um uh, sense of life and and the world and what kind of art i wanted to put out there and um 
So when I started looking at images, I could ask, uh, for me, it's an optimistic um, representation of humanity as, as um, beings that are, have a spark of divinity in them. There's something beautiful and, uh, and, uh, and remarkable about the potential that res resides within each one of us. So uh, I'm not gonna paint people that I, I will not represent people in an ugly, horrific, um, depressing light. Like I, even if that imagery, like making them like a vampire or making them monstrous, it could look cool, but, um, and it's easier to say, for example, it's easier to uh, uh, represent Dante's Inferno than it is to, to represent the paradise. Uh, but that ends up being like the challenge. So all to your like question about the, the perspective, like it starts to, I start to like ask the question, which, which way will the image look better? And is it in alignment with my values? That's how I know what better is for me. Um, I don't want it to look awkward or I want it to flow. I want it to look beautiful. I want the, the shapes to be clear and, and pleasing. Um, I want the lighting to be pleasing. I want the person that I'm representing to, to be represented in, in a beautiful kind of light. Um, so I'm always kind of like moving around saying like, okay, had, like where do they look good? How does, you know, how do they look good in relationship to the background? Um, am I gonna change any, like tweet, 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 there, there it is, right there. I think that's the best image. Um, uh, so golly, that was a long answer, uh, hopefully. No, well, I definitely appreciate it. No, yeah, and yeah. I I like how you how you described how well I feel like for like for like any good portrait or drawing anything, it's there's a like the essence of it is a collaboration between the artist and a sitter. And you circling around trying to find, hey, where do they look best is like in a way your own perspective of it. And that's how you wish to convey. So Thank you for answering that. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to just make a, a, another slight note on that. Um, I think that, you know, uh, there's, there's a feeling for all of us that um, when we, we've all seen photographs of ourselves that, um, you know, people have taken on their phone or whatever. And, and I mean, you can see, little kids doing this as well, selfies and whatever. And um, you see photographs and they look great. And you're thinking that looks better than actually I look. That actually looks really good. I'll keep that photograph. Uh, and then you've seen some that are looking pretty miserable uh, and you just delete, delete, delete. Um, well, in some sense, that's like the history of, of portraiture. It's like, you know, coming from the Greeks, but then skipping that, that um, Middle Ages, but then arriving again in the Renaissance, it's a representation of humanity in its best light. They, they don't want to be, people don't want to be represented in an ugly light, um, in spite of, in spite of what intelligentsia sort of, um, believes from say uh, our civil war, like from 1860, about 1860, you know, when we have mechanized war, it's that's the end of the romantic period. And the romantic period is, is a belief that, that the passions, that those things that are human sentiments, um, they, could, they could be divine. Uh, that's where we could find meaning and purpose, and 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 that whole romantic movement has 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 great literature and painting and that kind of thing. And then 1860, like our Civil War, could could pretty much represent the end of of that in in a kind of mechanized way, where 
where the art world starting to say, but the whole world is you know is starting to say um, there's nothing divine about humanity it's worthless it, you can mechanize death and destruction and certainly world war one is is even worse um, so and then of course you have the whole 20th century and that's a good way of understanding abstract art but if you're going to draw realistically you know a good way of understanding realism then is is making a choice if you're making the choice between humanity as as a horrific type of being that's depraved and sick or if it has potential to do wonderful beautiful magical things that that continue to make the world a better place and you know so there it is thank you yeah you're welcome thanks thanks for your thanks for your questions and your comments terrific I want to thank you, Dorian, on behalf of the Art Society and everyone who's attending tonight for such an outstanding presentation. You are an amazing artist, and your philosophy and sharing with us about your approach um, has just been outstanding. Um, I really did enjoy seeing the Zoom. Uh, progression um, and the different uh, approaches that you did, composition being key and something that's always been um, something I work well, work on all the time. Um, and uh, uh, I also want to invite everyone to our next meeting coming up um, January 11th. Um, and uh, Dorian, did you want to share with us how um, the artists, uh, how if they're interested in your workshop, um, how they can um, get more information or sign up at the Armory? Sure. I believe that the Armory actually has it on their website underneath a section uh, 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 called the Master Classes, I think. Uh, if okay. you, uh, I believe that's it, but I, somehow I have this awkward relationship to the word master. So like I see it and then I, I don't think of myself in that way. And so like now I'm stumbling over it. Um, but if, if you have any trouble at all, um, please feel free to, to email me and I will pass your name along to the, um, the person who's responsible for for signing it up and and i'll give you their telephone number and their direct email and and then they can sign you up without any any trouble or give you the link directly uh, okay that there's no trouble having to fuss around with their website or anything right that sounds good um i've taken a number of the master workshops at the armory and you will be in good company absolutely as a master um and uh, I think, uh, I hope uh, some people will be able to take advantage of it. A four day workshop is extraordinary. I think sometimes, you know, two days is not enough. Four days is just gonna be fantastic. So um, I think that will be very successful. Um, that's all I have for this evening. I'm glad we're recording so that we can share with those that aren't with us tonight. And I just want to say, um, Dorian reached out to our organization and said, would you be interested in a free Zoom demo? Um, and then we chatted and I was just uh, so taken with your work and uh, the offer. And I'm just so glad that we move forward with that. And I hope it's been a good experience for you as well. It's been lovely for me. Thank you very much. All and right. I appreciate if you guys it. want to look in the chat, I put the link to Dorian's workshop, how you can register uh, right. right there. You just click on that link and just scroll down a little bit until you see Dorian's name and you can register there. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. And, and, and if you miss that for some reason, you can always email me. And if you if you would like to email me and put, be put on a list for for future workshops or um, 
I don't know what, then, then, you know, I'd be happy to, to do that. I, I make little videos. I put them up on my, uh, on my website. So, um, I haven't been so good about that, but you know, you'll be notified if well, we want to follow, we want to follow and see, see where it takes you and, and just, um, encourage you and just, you've been an inspiration to us tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Leslie. It's an, an absolute pleasure. All right. All right. 